Yes, you can make a world-class bowl of ramen soup at home using budget ingredients found at any Walmart. You're not going to need anything that's impossible to find. You don't need to master any complicated techniques. With a little care and attention to detail, anyone can make a bowl of ramen at home that rivals the best restaurants in the world for a fraction of the cost. Here's the soup. One serving is two tablespoons shoyu tare, one tablespoon scallion aroma oil, one and a quarter cups of homemade pork and chicken chinton stock, alkaline noodles, and I'm gonna show you how to turn regular pasta into ramen-like noodles using a cool kitchen trick, but more on that in a second. Roasted and shredded pork shoulder, soy marinated soft boiled egg, and curly green onions. Everything you see here was purchased at Walmart. So let's break down how to make almost all of it from scratch. Now, arguably the most important element of ramen soup is its broth. A great bowl of ramen is only as good as its broth. It's the essential thing. For today's recipe, we'll be making a pork and chicken chintan, which means clear soup. It's a very light, delicate, meat-based broth that's thought to be one of the oldest styles of ramen. But before we get started, I want to address an often neglected yet crucial element of a next level broth, the water. Given that a broth is 99.9% .9 water, and that water is the medium through which all the flavors are extracted into the broth, why wouldn't you use the highest quality you can find? If all you've got is water from the tap, that's fine. It's what most ramen shops use, but tap water has all sorts of dissolved minerals in it that can mute flavors. And to prove it to you, here I've made two chicken stocks in my pressure cooker. One with tap water, and the other with filtered spring water. The tap water version is good, but the flavors are slightly flat. The spring water version tastes fresher and brighter. It's really difficult to overstate how much using good water can improve a broth or a stock. So I recommend grabbing a couple jugs of filtered spring water for your broth. Each of these was $1.08 at Walmart. Another common mistake in broth and stock making I see a lot of people make is just dumping everything in the pot at one time and letting it simmer until it's done. This can work, but it's not ideal because different ingredients have different peak extraction times. Peak extraction refers to the amount of time in which the maximum amount of flavor has been extracted from the ingredient into the broth or stock. For pork, it's typically 6 to 8 hours. For chicken, it's 4 to 6 hours. And for vegetables, it's about an hour. So today I've got four pounds of pork neck bones, four pounds of chicken wings, and one pound of chicken feet, all purchased from Walmart. So what we'll do today is start with our pork, then after a couple of hours, add the chicken. And in the last hour, we'll add the aromatic vegetables. This will ensure we're finishing our stock right at the moment we've extracted the maximum amount of flavor without any loss or degradation to that flavor. Because we're making a clear chinton broth, we'll need to blanch our bones first. What this step does is help us remove the myoglobin in the blood, which can lead to an off color in the broth and give it a slightly minerally or metallic taste. So let's bring a big pot of regular tap water up to a boil and drop in your pork bones. Then set a timer for 10 minutes. Skim all of the scum that rises to the top and discard it. After 10 minutes, strain the pork bones and rinse them under cold running water. Then set the blanched and rinsed bones aside. Now, for the chicken, bring a large pot of tap water up to a boil, drop in the wings and feet, and set a timer for 5 minutes. Skim all of the scum that rises to the top and remove it. After 5 minutes, strain the chicken and rinse it under cold running water. When it's cool, tear each wing at the joint, which should give you about two to three pieces per wing. Now take a pair of scissors and clip off the nails from each foot right below the toenail. Then cut an X into the palm of each foot. Breaking the wings down and clipping the feet will ensure the maximum amount of collagen is released into your broth. Next, we'll place the blanched and rinsed pork bones in a large pot and fill it with six liters of our good filtered spring water. Bring it up to around 190 degrees Fahrenheit and set a timer for two hours. During these two hours, if you see any scum, skim it from the top. Monitor the water temperature from time to time to make sure you never achieve a rapid boil. This could cloud your final broth. You want to keep it as close to 190 degrees Fahrenheit as you can manage. If you don't have a thermometer, what you're looking for is just a random bubble popping up here and there. After your two hour timer is up, add the chicken wings and feet to the pot and bring it back up to around 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Then set a timer for three hours, all the while monitoring the temperature and skimming any scum that rises to the surface. While our pork and chicken are simmering, it's the perfect time to prepare our aromatics. 
Pretty much everything I'm using here is classic in a ramen broth, except I like to add one special ingredient to up the umami flavor, but more on that in a second. So we have one roughly chopped onion, one rough chopped carrot, one bunch of scallions with their roots trimmed, four ounces of roughly chopped mushrooms, five cloves of garlic, and one one inch piece of sliced ginger. Now the secret ingredient I like to add along with the vegetables is bacon. I think bacon is a great addition because it can mimic some of the flavor of katsuobushi, which is a salted and smoked fish you'll often find in ramen broths. But I wasn't able to find any katsuobushi at Walmart, so by using bacon we can approximate some of that smoky, salty, umami flavor. It's totally optional, but I really do feel like it improves the flavor of the final broth. After our 3 hour timer is up, it's time to add the vegetables and bacon. And after we're back up to temperature, set a timer for 1 hour. After this hour is up, kill the heat, and it should be 6 hours total of light simmering. We're at the perfect peak extraction time for each ingredient. We're finishing our broth at the exact moment of maximum flavor extraction. To preserve the clarity of their broth, a lot of ramen chefs will ladle it out scoop by scoop like this. I generally find this unnecessary if you have a very fine mesh strainer like a chinois, but if you have just a regular strainer, you may want to line it with cheesecloth. Either way, strain the stock and cool it down as quickly as you can. I like to put mine in a metal pot that's in a large bowl filled with ice, and then just stir it until the broth is cool. Cooling the broth down as quickly as possible not only helps preserve the flavors better, it's also the safest way to bring down the temperature. Then I'll transfer it to a storage container and stick it in the fridge overnight. The next day, it should look something like this. It will most likely have a layer of fat collected on the top, and you'll need to scrape this off. You can save it for cooking if you'd like. And the way you know you've made a really good broth is if you are presented with a container of what looks like jello. This is how you know you've extracted the maximum amount of gelatin, which will improve the mouthfeel of our ramen soup. Then, if I'm not using it right away, I typically melt down the broth and transfer it to smaller containers to freeze for future use. Now, even though we just spent 6 hours making our chinton broth, it will still be bland because it has no salt. So, how are we going to season it? We're going to make a flavorful seasoning liquid known as a tare. The tare is the way you season and add flavor complexity to a ramen broth. Today we'll be making a version of a shoyu tare, which is soy sauce based. And because we're only using what you can find at Walmart, traditional Japanese tare ingredients like mirin, kombu, and katsuobushi are out. But we can still make a really good basic tare with some things I was able to pick up at Walmart. So in a small pot, let's start with one cup of soy sauce. If you can find this shoyu version at your local Walmart like I did, even better. But regular kikkuman soy sauce works great. Then add two tablespoons of sake, two teaspoons of rice vinegar, one half teaspoon of sugar, one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt, and one teaspoon of MSG. For those of you who don't know, Accent brand seasoning salt is MSG. And if you're not down with MSG, just up the salt a little bit. But most ramen shops do use it, just FYI. Then bring everything up to a boil, and as soon as it's bubbling, kill the heat and whisk to dissolve the salt, sugar, and MSG. After the tare has cooled down, taste it. You want it to be extremely salty, almost too salty, but still to taste good. Remember, this is the only seasoning we will be adding, and it needs to flavor both the broth and the noodles. So you want it to be very salty and savory, but still taste nice. The measurements I've given you worked for me, but you may need to adjust for personal preference. And after you've got it like you like it, the tari can be stored in the fridge indefinitely. Next up is the noodles. I tested almost every variety of ramen noodle available at Walmart for this video, and I wasn't happy with any of them. Although this one is slightly better than the rest. Everything you need to make your own ramen noodles at home is technically available at Walmart. You can basically do it with just wheat flour, baking soda, and water, but the process is somewhat tricky to get right, and there are much better videos for ramen noodle making here on YouTube if you want to do that. So today I'm just going to show you a quick kitchen hack on how to turn regular pasta into ramen light noodles by boiling them with with baking soda. By increasing the pH of our water and making it more alkaline with baking soda, we can get regular pasta to mimic that chewy texture and yellow hue that ramen noodles are so famous for. So what you'll want to do is bring a few quarts of water up to a boil, then add a bit of salt for seasoning, and approximately one tablespoon of baking soda per quart of water. Then toss in your pasta. I always use DiCecco brand Thin Spaghetti or DiCecco brand Angel Hair because it works well and it's a really good pasta that's available at Walmart. You'll want to cook the pasta approximately 2 minutes longer than the package instructs you to. 
Now the water will foam up because of the baking soda and you very quickly will be presented with a blob-like situation where it takes over your kitchen and possibly your neighborhood. So you might have to adjust the heat down a little. And I found that by spooning the foam back into the water and stirring, you can generally get it to die down. And this is the final product. Is it exactly like ramen? Honestly, I'd say it's about 80% of the way there. It looks very close, it's chewier than normal pasta, and I would say that most people wouldn't be able to tell the difference. This is one of those bizarre kitchen hacks that actually works really well, and it's certainly better than any ramen noodle available at Walmart. Next, we have a secret weapon that really good ramen shops use and most home cooks don't know about. Aroma oil. Essentially, it's just an oil or animal fat that has been flavored with an aromatic or something like katsuobushi. Aroma oils serve a number of purposes. Mainly, they allow chefs to add additional layers of flavor to their soups, they carry flavors better than broth can on its own, and they make the soup more visually appealing by giving it a sort of glossy sheen. Since we're doing a very light and clear chinton broth today, I'm going to show you how to make a very clean and basic scallion oil. So to a small pot, add one cup of neutral oil, I'm using vegetable, then toss in the white sections from two bunches of green onion. And if you're wondering, well, what do I do with the green parts? More on that in a second. Then place the oil over medium heat and cook the scallions until they have turned a nice shade of golden brown. This should take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. When they look good to you, remove them from the heat and allow the oil to cool down. Then strain the aroma oil into a storage container and it should keep for about 6 months in the fridge. Now for the toppings, the first up is the classic soy marinated soft boiled egg, or ajitama. And they're super easy to make at home. But before we deal with the eggs, let's make the marinade. So to a small pot, add one cup of soy sauce, one cup of sake, and I was shocked that they had sake at Walmart, but they did. One cup of water, and one tablespoon and one teaspoon of sugar. Bring it up to a boil, and boil for about 30 seconds and kill the heat. Then give a stir to dissolve the sugar and set it aside to cool completely. For the eggs, I'm going to show you a cool trick they use at ramen shops. So bring a pot of water up to a boil and prepare an ice bath. Then take a paper clip and bend one end out just like this. Now take your eggs and using the back of a spoon, tap a hole into each egg with the paper clip. This releases a bit of air so the egg can hold a more uniform shape. It also makes them easier to peel. Now lower the eggs into the boiling water and set a timer for exactly 7 minutes. For the first minute, gently stir the eggs as they're cooking. This centrifugal motion will help the yolk set right in the middle. After 7 minutes, Remove the eggs to the ice bath and allow them to sit until they're cool enough to handle. Then peel them under water. And let me give you a pro tip. Always make more than you need, because there's always going to be one rogue egg that just turns out hideous. Then dry your eggs off and add them to a container with the cooled marinade. Place a piece of plastic on top to keep the eggs submerged and stick them in the fridge and allow them to marinate for at least 6 hours but no longer than 24, as they tend to get a bit salty. After marinating, the ajitama will keep in the fridge for about a week. Now, for the meat, the most common cut you'll see is pork belly chasu. The problem is, I wasn't able to find pork belly at Walmart, but I was able to find pork shoulder. And we can make a really good, really simple carnita style shredded pork that is perfect for a ramen topping. So what you'll do is take equal parts sugar and kosher salt, mix them together, and rub them all over the pork. I'm using 2 tablespoons of sugar and 2 tablespoons of kosher salt. Then put into a container, cover with plastic wrap or a lid, and stick it in the fridge to cure for at least 6 but no longer than 18 hours. Then to cook, discard any liquid that's accumulated and place on a baking sheet. Roast the shoulder in a 250 degree oven, uncovered, for 6 hours, making sure to baste with the rendered fat every couple of hours or so. After the shoulder is cooked, let it cool off just a bit and shred it with a couple of forks just like this. Then let it cool down completely and use it immediately or store it in a tightly covered container in the fridge for up to 3 days. And our final topping is curly scallions. This is another restaurant trick that looks fancy but is super easy to make. So take those scallion tops from earlier and slice them in half lengthwise. Then take those sheets and slice them as thin as you can get them. If you want to go super thin, you can do it with a paring knife. Then toss them in a bowl of ice water for about 10 to 15 minutes. And they'll end up looking like this. And just make sure to dry the scallions off in a paper towel before storing in a container in the fridge for up to 3 days. Now, as you've probably noticed, this is a multi-day process. And yes, I wore this shirt two days in a row. However, when you have all the components ready to go, the dish actually comes together very quickly. So let's make a bowl of ramen. 
To start, I like to toss a bowl in the oven on the warm setting. I've got the noodles boiling and the broth heating up. All of my toppings are ready to go. When the noodles are done, take your warm bowl and add two tablespoons of tare, one tablespoon of the scallion aroma oil, one and a quarter cup of our chintan broth, five and a half ounces of alkaline noodles, a handful of our shredded pork, one soy marinated soft boiled egg, and a small bunch of curly scallions. And that's it. Now let's give it a taste test. A really good bowl of ramen soup is one of the truly great dishes of the world. It has everything. It's warm, it's filling, it makes you feel like home. The broth is perfectly balanced, it brings everything together. The chewiness of the noodles, the savoriness from the pork, the little bit of saltiness from the egg, and the earthy crunchiness from the green onions. It is totally possible to make a world-class bowl of ramen soup using budget ingredients found at any Walmart, and I hope I've proven that to you. And I want to give you one last pro tip. If you decide to make this recipe and find yourself with a bunch of ramen broth and not a lot of storage space, this is what you do. Take your broth and boil it until it's reduced by half. Then cool it down and freeze the concentrate. Anytime you want fresh ramen, heat up equal parts ramen broth concentrate and water, and it tastes exactly like real fresh ramen broth. And that is how you save 50% of storage space by switching to ramen concentrate. Thanks for watching.